it's Brittany and welcome back. Today is our newest installment of Makeup and Murder. So today we will be covering the case of John Cooper or the Pembrokeshire murderer, the game show killer, the bullseye killer, whatever y'all want to call him, we're covering him today. This is another great story, but for once, I feel like in this story, we'll see some actual good police work from, you know, beginning to end for the most part, but let's jump into the story. Now, before we get started, I want to thank everyone that's already subscribed to my channel. It's truly appreciated. And for those of you who are just finding my channel for the first time, welcome. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also make sure you hit that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post new content. And make sure you guys like the video. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to my channel and it don't cost anything. So John Cooper. Now, as always, before I get started, applying any type of makeup, I'm always gonna moisturize. So today I'll be using my, one of my favorites. This is the Pharmacy Daily Greens Moisturizer. And this is great if you have oily or combination to oily skin. This is a oil-free gel moisturizer. It goes on super smooth. My skin absorbs it really quickly. So that is what I'll be using today. That's it. All right, and then next, I'm going to follow up with one of my favorite primers. This does wonders for controlling my oil on my face, but this is the Fenty, and this is their True Matte Pro Filter Primer. Starting with John Cooper. John William Cooper. He was born in Wales, and he was born on September 3rd of 1944. And there isn't a ton of background information on him as a child, but we do know that he dropped out of school at the age of 15. So he never graduated high school. So instead he worked various different trade jobs. He was a farm hand. He just did a lot of different trade jobs. He was a welder's helper, that kind of thing, since he didn't have formal education. For my brows, I am using the Maybelline New York Ultra Slim Brow Pencil. So when he was 22 years old, he married his wife named Patricia. And him and Patricia went on to have two children, a boy and a girl. And everyone, you know, felt like he was just a great family man, a stand-up guy, a, you know, good husband, good father, that kind of thing. So nobody knew what was brewing deep down inside and what he was doing with his free time. In real life, while everybody's thinking he's such a family man, he was actually really abusive to both his wife and children. He, you know, would beat his kids for just frivolous things. Like it did just the smallest things. Anything that made him mad that day was reason enough for him to beat his kids. He even at one point held you know his shotgun which we'll find out is his favorite weapon he held up a shotgun to his son's head in one of the events like that's the type of father he was during his trial his all his son had also mentioned that they had a dog as a kid and eventually their dog got old and you know when you get up there in age they get sick they have different issues and instead of you know taking the dog to the vet getting the dog euthanized or, you know, seeing what's wrong with him, he decides that he being John decides that he is going to take that dog in the backyard and just beat it, beat it to death for 30 minutes straight. Now, if you follow true crime, you know that this is like a clear sign of like a psychopath, someone who's going to do some damage at some point in their life. He is beating animals. He's abusive to his children. And I wouldn't put it past, you know, his early childhood to say that he was probably abused in some way, whether it be emotionally or physically, because that's, that's traditionally the trend for these serial killers. So now I'm using my Wander Beauty brow gel. So in 1978, John won 90,000 euro 
But if we tack on inflation to be around this time, we're looking at 500,000 euro. Our time is what he won. So he wins this money in some type of competition. And he decides that he's gonna take that money and he's gonna start a small family farm. So he quits his job and he starts this small family farm. But of course that didn't work out. Um, he had a really bad gambling habit and he gambled all the money away. So that money was gone rather quickly. And this really starts to establish like his need for quick money, fast money. He likes to do things like competition and games and other things that we'll learn. And I am just using my, this is my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer and this is in Cafe. So now John has no job, no money, no skills, no education. So he has to figure out some kind of way to support his family, to support himself and his own gambling habit, because you know that has to continue. So he has to find a way to make some fast cash. So what does he do? He starts to commit burglaries. Now I'm taking the Fenty. This is their amplifying eyeshadow primer. So by 1983, he was a full-time burglar. Basically, that was his job. He worked small jobs like farm hands and things like that, but basically, he was a burglar. That was a part-time for him. Now, outside of being a burglar, some other things that you know he enjoyed doing, which will have some importance in the case is he liked to fish, he liked to scuba dive, and he was just like a general person that likes outdoors. His son also said that he was obsessed with survivalist tactics and the guides for survival. He was literally obsessed with that type of stuff. Now I'm gonna take my Visart palette using the this dark brown here and then the lighter brown. And I'm really going for kind of a nude, neutral kind of look today. So we will see how that turns out. Now, when he would commit these burglaries, he was still, you know, the typical things. He was still money. He would steal coins. He would steal jewelry. But what was different about him was once he stole these items, he would have bonfires and he would literally burn the jewelry, he would burn the coins, he would burn those valuable things to see if they were actually valuable. He would see if they would melt, if the jewels that were there were real. That was his way of establishing value of the things that he had stolen. His son also admitted that there were nights where he would see his dad leave. Summer, winter, fall, spring, it didn't matter, he would leave and he would have a coat and he would have a shotgun tucked under his coat. Now, where his family thought he was going, dressed this way, equipped this way, I have no clue. I don't know why they thought that was okay. I don't know why they thought they should just disregard that. But either way, that's what was happening in the Cooper household. And now I'm taking my Minted Cosmetics Everyday Eyeshadow Palette for a little glitz my favorite one okay you guys so i am going to throw on my magnetic lashes and i will be right back this is my charlotte tilbury pillow talk push-up lashes and i like this stuff but you have to be careful with it because it can get places that you don't want it to be there we go all right so let's jump into john william cooper's crimes so there were three major incidents of criminal activity that deemed him a serial killer and the first happened in 1985 so from 1983 to 1985 he committed a ton of burglaries 
armed robberies, that kind of thing. So he did that for those two years, which is again, what we typically see with a serial killer is we see them start what we consider smaller because a crime is a crime. But from what we consider smaller, they start small in robberies, burglaries, that kind of thing. And then they work their way up to eventually hurting, murdering, assaulting somebody. I'm gonna use my Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. And this color is mahogany, it's orange, and it's a good color corrector for me. So I'm just gonna use it to color correct a couple areas. So his first crime that he committed was actually on someone that he knew. It was a brother and sister, and their names were Richard and Helen Thomas. And they were older. I think Helen was in, in her upper 50s. I think she was 58, and her brother was a couple years older, about 60 years old. And they knew John. They knew John because he had been a farmhand for them at one point. It was also said that he would buy hay from Mr. Thomas and quite often people would hear him arguing about the price. He was that type of person trying to, you know, barter and finagle his way into a cheaper price for some damn hay. But they knew him very well. So John's original plan was to actually just burglarize them. He thought that the brother and sister would not be at home. But unfortunately for the Thomas family, the sister was at home. Upon entering the home, John was kind of like startled, taken aback by the sister being there, the sister being Helen. So now I'm going to add Iconic Illuminator. And this is Iconic London's Illuminator. This is in blush, and I like to put this under my foundation, especially when I'm using kind of a liquid foundation, I'll put it under my foundation just so that I get more of a natural glow instead of that artificial highlighter glow. So I'm just gonna put that kind of typically where I would apply my highlighter. I'm gonna take my stippling brush and I'm gonna spray a little bit of setting powder on it so that the Highlighter doesn't move once I apply my foundation. So when he broke into their home, he was startled by Helen being there. And as soon as he, you know, heard her being, he heard her there, she recognized his voice as well. So he ended up shooting her instantly. After that took place, he continued to burglarize the home, looking through the things that they had in their home for anything valuable. And the brother came home, which was again, another unfortunate event. So unfortunately for Mr. Thomas, when he came home, he was also shot and killed. And you know, that was bad enough. First of all, you're murdered by somebody that you know, which is bad enough. But after he murders the brother and sister, he burns down their house so that there's no trace of what he did. So he takes diesel and he douses the entire home with diesel and sets it on fire. Just, that's just crazy. That's, that's another level of crazy. I am using the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation and this is Iguasu or Deep Three. Now, this case was, you know, a big case for their area. This is a safe, super safe area in Wales. And they're not used to, you know, murders, let alone a double murder. So the police put, you know, their best investigators on the case. They have over 150 police officers in some capacity working on this particular case because it is something that is so abnormal for them. But it's all to no avail. They actually, and we will later find this out, but they actually, at one point, they did interview John for the murder, but this was just, at the time, it was just a part of kind of like a regular routine, um, work in the case kind of investigation. People that knew them, people that worked for them, that kind of thing. So there was no reason for them to think that you know this normal family man would have done you know anything like that at the time to someone they knew and someone that they worked for so basically the case of the thomases go cold 
So now I am going to take my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And this is also in Cafe, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of brightening under the eye. So on July 2nd of 1989, a man by the name of Tim Dixon reported that his mother and father had been missing. Apparently they went on a camping trip to Pembrokeshire and they never came back. So he filed a missing persons report. And then two or three days later, police find the bodies of both Peter and Gwenda Dixon. And they're found kind of on a path, kind of hidden under some brush on a path near where they had been camping. The last time that they were reported to even have been seen by anybody on the campsite was June 29th. So a few days before the Sun even reported them missing. The police receive over, you know, 1700 calls, leads, but none of them go anywhere. And again, eventually the case just goes cold. And now I'm gonna set my concealer with my Laura Mercier Translucent Deep Powder. Then I'm just gonna dust this off. I don't bake. Baking looks cakey, so I don't bake. So what actually happened to the Dixons? So what happened was, of course, our friend John had been on the prowl and he came across the Dixons as they were camping. And he basically threatened them with his shotgun. He then proceeded to tie up the husband and sexually assault the wife in front of the husband. And then after that, he forced them to give him his debit, their debit cards and forced them to give up their pin number as well. And then as they both were tied up, he shot them both in point blank range. Like you got what you wanted. Like, th like this is what I don't understand. He's a man, he wants the quick money that he doesn't really have to work for, quick and what he thinks is easy. And what, what do you need to kill these people for? You got what you wanted from them. What, what, what was the purpose of that? I don't understand. And even after he did all this, he got the pin numbers. He got the jewelry because he took the wedding ring from the husband. And even after he got all of this, he went to the ATM and got 350 euro. That's it. You killed two people for 350 euro and then went and pawned the wedding ring and got 25 for the ring. So you killed somebody for 375 euro, two people for nothing, for pennies. And again, for the second time, the police questioned him about this case as well during their initial vest investigation. And they, you know, had an inkling that it might've been him, but at the time they had no evidence to link him to it other than that was a place that he frequented. He was kind of a weird guy. But they had no you know hard evidence to link him to the case so they had no choice but to let him go but they did keep that man in the back of their mind don't get it twisted these police did the right thing these are not our you know standard cops that are lax and lazy on the job get tunnel vision that kind of thing these are not those people they actually worked the case and you know they kept tabs of john as he went on for the next couple of years because this case goes cold as well. And mind you, just a few months before he created this whole ordeal and you know committed this crime, he's on a game show. He was on the show over there that was super popular at the time. It was called Bullseye. So that's why you get the name the Bullseye Killer, the Game Show Killer. He was on the game show cool as a cucumber. They asking him, oh, what's your favorite hobbies? You have some unique hobbies, which is a creepy question in the first place. But he's like, oh yeah, I like to scuba dive. That's your hobby? You sure? Not a care in the world. That's how you know. Psychopath. Psychopath. Now I'm going to be using my Revolution Glow Splendor Ultra Matte Bronzer in deep, just to bring some color back to my face. Don't want to be looking like it's my funeral, y'all. So his third crime, major crime, his third major crime, 
It was committed on March 6th, 1996. And this crime was committed on five teenagers. He just didn't care, didn't matter. He had another, this is another serial killer who has no preference, no type. His only goal is to get what he can. I'm also gonna take a little bit of bronzer and put it down the sides of my nose for just a little bit of shaping. But what he did to these kids was just terrible. So first of all, what he did was he, you know, wearing his baklava as he always did. And if y'all don't know what that is, that's just a black mask, like the sweater mask with the eyes and the mouth cut out. So he's wearing that. He runs up on these kids with his shotgun, obviously. And first he demands all their monies, all their valuables. He wants everything from them. So after that, he demands that all of them lay down on the ground. I am going to deepen my cheeks up just a smidge with my skin stick and caviar from Fenty Beauty. But what he does after he makes the teens lay face down on the ground is he takes one of those teens, a teenage girl, and he proceeds to sexually assault her. Now, after he's done with one, he takes another and he does the same thing. Like, just disgusting. But he, you know, takes both of these girls and sexually assaults them and then proceeds to try, you know, to scare all of them by shooting a shotgun in the air, threatening them and probably telling them, like, if you ever tell anybody or if you call the police or report the police, I'll come find you all. That kind of thing. And now I'm using my Rare Beauty blush, and this is the color Love, and this is the liquid blush. But after this happens and he, you know, attacks these teenagers, again, this case also goes cold. Now for this particular case, because the case was going cold and the police kept, you know, they were spinning their wheels, again, doing the same police work that they, sh you know, should have been doing, but just was not getting anywhere. So when that happened, they featured this case on a BBC show called Crime Watch, and it helped a little bit and it got them some tips, but again, it just didn't get them enough to pull the case together and identify a 100% certain suspect. So now I'm gonna go in with my Fenty Beauty Penny For You Thoughts highlighter. And I'm just gonna put this in my bridge area and then on my chin. I already put some like natural highlighter on the sides of my face. So I just wanna zhuzh up this area a little bit. So in 1998, John Cooper was actually arrested and he was arrested for the 30 burglaries that they could charge him with, even though he had committed way more than that. He was arrested for 30 burglaries and armed robbery. Now, again, when I'm speaking about the quality police work, the police officers made sure to collect as much physical evidence as they could from this man's home. And they collected his shorts, clothes, everything you can think of in his house. As they were searching, you know, different properties, they found a gun that they took into custody. So, you know, like I said, the police in this case were really trying their best to do their job. They just could not get, you know, good evidence. And this was the time before DNA. So it was that much harder to try to solve a murder case, a rape case, or anything of that nature that's, you know, much easier now that we have technology like DNA. So in December of 1998, he was convicted of armed robbery and 30 burglaries. So he was sentenced to 16 years in prison. I'm just gonna go back in with my Laura Mercier and do kind of a setting dusting of the setting powder. Now, the way that he was caught for these burglaries and the armed robbery was because for one of his robberies, he made a huge mistake. So he was robbing this woman and in the process of trying to burglarize her home, he 
beat her with his shotgun and he tied her up and she still managed to call for help. And as she managed to call for help, he ran y'all. He was trying to get up out of that jam real fast. So he ditched his baklava and his gloves in a bush by the house because obviously he didn't want to be seen wearing either one of those things, you know, by the time that police or help got to the area. So when police did get to the area though, they found all that and they processed it. And I feel like by 1998, there was enough DNA technology to identify somebody at the very least. So that's how he got convicted in the first place. So now I'm gonna go back in really quick with my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk push-up lashes mascara just to clean up all the lashes that got any you know makeup on it whether it be powder or anything like that so in 2006 they formed a cold case team to look at the case of the thomas murders the dixon murders and the attack of the teenagers in 1996. so what they did with having like all this new dna technology and everything they took all that stuff that they had done good police work with and collected during the arrest back in 1998 of John Cooper, processed all that stuff for DNA. The gun, the shorts, everything that they found, they processed it for DNA. So they spend two years processing every piece of DNA evidence, processing every piece of evidence, period, cataloging that shit top to bottom to make sure that all of their ducks are in a row, all of their I's are dotted and all of their T's are crossed because when they go to trial, they want it to be a one and done. So they wanted to make sure they had all the bullets in the chamber, okay? So they took two years, he was in jail, he wasn't going anywhere. They had time to make sure they got it right the first time, which is what should be done. No rush jobs when it comes to solving murder cases and convicting people on both sides. You wanna make sure you're convicting the right person. And then you also wanna make sure that you don't put the family through a whole ordeal of having to go to court and have trials about a murdered loved one multiple times. So they took their time. They pulled him out of jail and they interviewed him for four days. And in those four days, they didn't get a damn thing from him. He acted like a pure child, sat there with his head down like this, sat there with his fingers in his ears, a grown ass man. So that was in June of 2008. So by April of 2009, they had all the tea. They had everything, y'all. I'm going to take my Fenty Gloss Cream, and this is the Fenty Glow. And I'm also going to take my Brown NYX Lip Liner, and I'm just going to line my lips with this and then add a little bit of this, looking for another neutral lip, y'all, with a little bit of pink. As they got the DNA back from the DNA test back from the shorts, and honey, those shorts had the DNA of Peter Dixon on them. Also, they found the gun, his shotgun, they found under the paint DNA from Mr. Dixon. So his, you know, conviction for that double murder was signed, sealed, and delivered, okay? Now for the murder of Richard and Helen Thomas, there was a sock at the old address in a bush, he loved putting shit in bushes, but there was a sock hidden in one of the bushes where he used to live when he lived near Helen and Richard Thomas. And it was on the property that he lived at. And this is like a very low populated area. You know, not many people move in and move out of the area. It's like a farm home. So they find the sock that has Mr. Thomas's DNA on the sock. Stop hiding shit in bushes. People can find it. We, we found the sock in the bush. We found your baklava, your gloves in the bush. Stop hiding shit in bushes. Like, be a better criminal. Like, criminals are always dumb. 
thank God, but criminals are always dumb. No one ever murders right. There is no perfect murderer, thank God. And now I'm just gonna do one final spray with my Milani Make It Last Matte Finisher. While they were waiting for all this DNA evidence, unfortunately, John Cooper got out of prison. He served his time and he got out of prison for the burglaries and the armed robbery. But honey, they were watching. They were keeping tabs. And just a few months later, two months later, baby, he was back clink clink. And he was arrested for the murder of Richard and Helen Thomas. He was arrested for the murder of Peter and Gwenda Dixon. And he was also arrested for the assault on those five teenagers as well. The judge was not playing, honey. The judge threw the book at him. He was sentenced to four life sentences, four life sentences, no possibility of parole, never getting out, none of that, period. And those are the type of monsters that we need to keep off of the street. Like there was nothing that triggered him to commit these crimes other than greed and then anger or not wanting to be caught. Those are the type of people that need to be locked up. So I'm glad that the judge threw the book at him. I also commend the policemen over in Wales for doing what they needed to do, you know, collecting the evidence when it should have been collected and keeping it, storing it properly so that it's not damaged, tampered with, destroyed. All of those things matter. We need to be taking notes from some of these other countries and how they handle their police work. Some of them, stay away from them because, you know, police ain't a real thing in some countries. But these people did some really great police work. So I am happy to see him locked up. I'm happy that he's never getting out. I'm happy that that little bitty window that he had, he had no chance to actually commit a crime, we hope. But that is it, y'all. That is the story of john william cooper what did y'all think of that i thought he was you know nuts i feel like anybody who can play that double life of being what other people perceive as a good husband good family man no matter what's going on inside the home when you can portray that to other people outside of your home and be somebody that abuses his wife abuses his children puts a gun up to his own 11 year old son's head you know, and then goes on to commit burglaries, armed robberies, rapes, and murders. I feel like that's a special kind of crazy. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought about John Cooper. Had you heard of this story before? This is the story from, you know, our international friends. So this was kind of fun to do some research on. But I want to know what you guys thought of the story and this is the final look i like it i think it's cute nice and neutral again something that i can wear on an everyday basis something that keeps me looking like i'm pulled together but not doing too much so i like it let me know what you guys think i love hearing from you guys i love interacting with you guys i love sharing all of this stuff with you guys. So let me know if there's something that you want to see, whether it is a true crime story or whether it's something else that you like me to film. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm always open to ideas, feedback, that kind of thing. I had a ton of fun with this look and I really enjoyed today's story and I hope you did too. So be on the lookout for next week's Makeup and Murder. It should be really, really interesting. I'm planning on telling more stories about, you know, more unknown crimes. So it should be interesting. So stick, stick around, stay tuned. And I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And make sure that you hit that notification bell so when next week's videos come out, you're already ready for them, okay? Other than that, love you guys. Bye.